everyone so uh, today we're gonna go over a little bit of uh, testing uh, car audio home audio some PA um, all with a multimeter on the ohm settings um, so basically you're gonna want to start out by setting your own your multimeter to ohms at 200 um, and this is gonna test the impedance uh, to let us know that the, vo the voice coils and everything is are gonna be good to go so to start off we're gonna have a look at this speaker um, this is the designer Q contractor series um, and the first thing you'll notice is is that it's actually not stamped with an ohm rating on the back um, that's because it's not typically you know a bigger brand um, it's not one of the major ones um, so with a little bit of research you can easily find online that this guy's rated at 8 ohms um, so now we're just gonna hook it up to the multimeter and just see what it's actually coming up as and this will give us a little bit of insight as to how it's been treated so as right now it's just sitting a little bit uh, over one in the difference um, our multimeter is reading 6.68 or 6.8 um, and that's not too bad. What you're looking for is is either three above or three below is kind of considered the safe area to be able to purchase this without any issues. Um, you know it hasn't been you know overworked um, and at the same time you know it's not on its last legs. So now we're having a look at a JBL Professional Series uh, PA horn. Um, so I already have the multimeter actually hooked up into the uh, speaker ports here where the speaker wire would go. Um, so if you have a look at the sticker here, this one actually has it stamped on the back that it's rated for 16 ohms. Um, so if we want to have a look at the multimeter here, this one's a great example of one that's sitting, you know, almost uh, less than half of what it should be at. Um, it's sitting at 7.4. Um, so this easily tells us that this PA horn um, was basically, you know, a little bit abused and it's kind of on its last legs. Um, and the fact that it came in solely by itself uh, kind of tells us that the gentleman probably replaced it. So next up, uh, last but not least, we got a little co uh, two-way coaxial speaker um, for car audio. Uh, I think it's just a six and a half inch. So um, on these, basically, it's kind of the same rule of thumb. Um, so you want to turn it upside down um, and you want to have the speaker connectors here. Um, we're going to attach the ohm meter to it once again. Now, we googled this one also and we found out the specs on Crutchfield um, and it was rated for four ohms. Um, so that's what we're kind of hoping to see. So once again, we'll just kind of connect it. Right. We'll have a look at our ohm meter and it's sitting at 3.6. Um, that's exactly where we want it to be. It's not three below what it's rated for and it's not three above what it's rated for. So this is a good example of one that would be okay to buy. One thing I would like to mention is that when it comes down to the speaker, if there's an issue with the tweeter that's built in too, that will affect the outcome of this because this rating that they give you is for the entire speaker and everything that it's attached to.